Hi friends, welcome to Ashok IT. This is Ashok. In this video, we will discuss about arrays in Java. Alright, let's get started. As part of this video, we are going to understand what is array, why we need to go for arrays concept, how to create an array, how to initialize an array, how to traverse array, how many types of arrays available, and what are the coding challenges with respect to arrays? All right. First, let's understand the introduction part. In any programming language, if we want to store the data, then we will use variables. Variables are used to store the data. If I want to store one value, then I will take one variable like int a is equal to 10. If I want to store another value, then I need to take another variable like int b is equal to 20. If I want to store third value, then I need to take third variable. One variable is used to store one value. For example, if I want to store 10,000 values, then we need to take 10,000 variables. Writing 10,000 variables inside the program is not at all recommended. It's not a good programming practice because it will decrease readability of the program. That's where arrays comes into picture. If you want to store multiple values, then you need to take multiple variables to store those values. If you store 10,000 values using 10,000 variables, your program readability will be decreased. That's why we will take array. Array is used to store multiple values. By using arrays concept, we can store multiple values into single variable. Understood? What is array? Array is a reference to data type. Array is used to store multiple values. Array will store the data based on the indexes. For example, if you want to store 10 values, 10 values you can store into single variable by using array concept. Now, array will maintain the data based on indexes. Array index always will start from 0th position. So we can say array is a container which is used to store collection of elements with the same data type. Suppose if you want to store integer values, we will create integer array. If you want to store decimal values, we will create decimal array. If you want to create a string values, then we can create string array. So array is a container which is used to store collection of elements with the same type. If you want to store 10,000 values, you no need to create 10,000 variables now. You create one array. In that array, you can store 10,000 values also. All right. Then next question, how to create an array? We need to follow some syntax in order to create that array. First, array declaration. What type of data you want to store? You specify that by using data type and that braces represents that it is the array type. Data type, variable name. Then array creation, declaration plus creation. So what is the size? How many values you want to store in the array? You need to specify that at the time of creating the array. Array declaration and array creation. Instead of doing that in two lines, we can combine that into single line also. Declaration plus creation in the single line. Data type, variable name is equal to new data type. New is a keyword which is used to create an array object. And here we are giving size. That size represents how many objects or how many values we want to store into that array. Alright, example. If I'm taking integer array is equal to new int of 4, here int represents a data type, arr represents name of the variable, and new is a keyword, and 4 represents size. That means I want to create array with 4 size. Array with 4 size means I want to store 4 values. 4 indexes will be created. Array will maintain the data based on the indexes. Array index will start from 0th position. Array index start from 0, the last index of the array is always size minus 1. Here I have given size as a 4, so the last index is 4 minus 1, that is 3. Array is having index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3. Like this we can create the array and we can store the data. Indexes will play very important role when we are working with arrays. If you want to store the data or if you want to retrieve the data from the array, you need to use the index concept. All right. Now, let us take a simple Java program on the array. Here I am creating one array with a size as 3. Integer array is equal to new int of 3. Now, 
Whenever that line is executed, one array will be created with three indexes. As we discussed, index starts from 0, last index is size minus 1. Here size is 3, 3 minus 1, that is 2 is the last index. Alright, now I want to store some data into this array. As we told, uh, we can store multiple values into single variable. Now, we want to store multiple values into this array. Three indexes are available. We can store three values. How to store the data? ARR of 0 is equal to 100. I am storing 100 value at the 0th index. Then 100 will be stored into 0th position here. Suppose if I want to store 101, array of 1 is equal to 101, 101 will be stored into 1st index. Array of 2 is equal to 102, I am going to store 102 into 2nd index. Alright, if you try to store any other value, no, it's not possible because three indexes only available. We created array with the size as three. If I store array of three is equal to one or three, it will fail because the indexes is the indexes are only three. If you try to store or if you try to access the index which is not available in the array, then we will get array index out of bound exception. All right, here we have three indexes, so we can store three values. Next, how to access the values? Same, by using index we can access the value also. Array of 0, if you access array of 0, in the 0th index 100 is available, you will get 100 as output. If you access array of 1, 101 will be output because in the first index 101 is available. If you access array of 2, 102 is available in the second index, we will get 102 as the output. Alright, like this we can create the array, we can initialize the array and we can retrieve the values also from the array. Let us see that programmatically. So here I have a class called demo. I am taking a main method which is used to run my Java program. Here I am creating the array. Here I am initializing the array. Here I am trying to access the array values. Let's run this program. When I run this program, three values are there. I am able to print those three values. For example, if I try to store some value at the array of index 3, array of index 3 is not available. Size I have given as 3, 0, 1, 2. So 2 is the last index. But I am trying to access array of 3. I am trying to store 1 or 3 at array of 3. Let us see the behavior. It will give exception. What is that exception? Array index out of bound exception we are getting array index out of bound exception we are getting because this index is not available so we should not take like this right when i'm trying to access 0 1 2 3 indexes are available i'm able to access these three indexes for example if i try to access if i try to access array of 3 then is that third index available not available then we are going to get array index out of bound exception so this line is also invalid this line will give array index out of bound exception. And remember, whenever we are creating the array, we need to give integer positive number. Suppose for example, if I give minus 3, it is not going to accept it. It is saying that negative array size exception. Always we need to remember that the size of the array should be a positive number and that should be integer type only. If I take 5.5, .5, can I take a decimal value as a size of the array? Decimal value is not accepted. See, compilation only failed. Array size should be always a positive and integer type number. Decimal value not accepted. Negative number also not accepted. When we will get array index out of bound exception, if you try to access the index which is not available in the array, then we will get array index out of bound exception. Alright. So with this we are able to understand how to create one array how to initialize one array and how to access array values also based on the index. Next, now here we are creating array in two ways. In the approach one, in the line number eight, if you see, I'm creating array with size as a three and line number 10, 11, 12, I'm trying to initialize the array based on the index. I'm storing three names. Instead of doing like that, we can go for approach two also. In the single line, we are able to create the array and we are able to initialize. So approach 1, approach 2 both are same. In the approach 1, we are first creating, then we are initializing. In the approach 2, at the time of creation only, we are initializing the values directly. Both arrays are having size as 3. Good. Now, if I store the values into array, then how to traverse the array? 
how to access all the values from the array suppose if my array is having 100 values how can we traverse that array how can we retrieve the data from the array we can retrieve the data from the array in multiple ways right by using for loop you can access the elements from the array by using for each loop we can access the data from the array and in the java 1.8 streams concept introduced by using this stream also we can access the data from the array let us see that programmatically so here I am taking one array, string names, it is a string array, I have stored three names in the approach one. I am taking integer i is equal to 0, loop is starting from 0th index, less than, i less than names dot length. Here length is a property which will give you size of the array. Array size is 3, it will give names dot length as 3, i plus plus. So here I am writing system dot out dot println of names of i. First time i value will be 0, names of i, it will give such an as a output. Then i value will be incremented, names of 1, Ganguly will be the output. i value will be incremented, names of 2, Sehwag will be the output. After that, when the i value is incremented, the condition is going to fail, so it will come out from the loop. By using this for loop, we can print array elements in the forward direction. Similarly, we can go for for each loop also, string name colon names, names is the array. From this names array, take each name and store into name variable and print it. This is for each loop approach to then we are using third approach streams stream of names names is my array i'm passing array as the input to create this stream dot for each method name by using lambda expression i'm printing that name like this you can traverse the array in multiple ways for loop for each loop and by using string let me execute this program yes approach one we are able to see the data Approach 2, we are able to see the data. Approach 3, we are able to see the data. Similarly, can we traverse the array in the reverse order? Yes, we can traverse the array in the reverse order also. Whenever we are traversing here, I am starting the index from 0. If I want to traverse the array in the reverse order, I need to start the index from here, here to here. So this for loop is printing the array from left to right, forward direction. I want to print array data in the backward direction. How can we print array data in the backward direction? By using this for loop, we can print in the backward direction also. Let us see how can we print in the reverse order. Simple. You need to take care of the loop for integer i is equal to. I don't want to give 0. If I give 0, 0 will represent first index. I want to represent last index. How to find out the last index of the array? Arrays dot array dot length. Length will give the size. Size is 3, but last index is size minus 1. So names dot length minus 1, it will give the last index of the array. Then i greater than or equal to 0, then i minus minus. I'm initializing the i value as the last index of the array and for every iteration, I'm decreasing that i value. I'm decrementing that. How many times I want to execute it? If i value greater than or equal to 0, then my loop should execute. If i value becomes a negative number, I don't want to execute it because the last value will be 0th index. Let us print this values. System.out.println names of i. Names of i. Let's execute it. So here Sachin Ganguly Sehwag, it is printing in the left to right direction. But here if you see Sehwag Ganguly Sachin, it is printing in the reverse order. So like this, you can write the loop to print the array data in the reverse order. All right, the data. Perfect. Next, types of arrays. We have two types of arrays, guys. First one is single dimensional array and the second one is multi-dimensional array. Single dimensional array will represent only one row and multi-dimensional arrays will represent rows and columns. If you want to represent the data in the form of rows and columns, then we can go for multi-dimensional array. So let us see how to create multi-dimensional array. So like this, we can create multi-dimensional array, row size and column size we can represent 0 of 0, 0 of 1, 1 of 0 and 1 of 1. So here it will represent the row and column index, row and column index, row and column index. I'm trying to initialize this multi-dimensional array, then I'm trying to iterate the array elements. First time, when I use this ARR, ARR is a multi-dimensional array. Multi-dimensional array is nothing but a combination of arrays. Subarrays will be available. When I traverse, first time I am getting some subarray. When I traverse that subarray, I am going to get the actual value. 
So this is used to store the data into multi-dimensional array and here I am printing the data from multi-dimensional array. So like this we are able to store the data and we are able to access the data. Remember that row size and column size. Whenever you are storing the data, you need to keep that row size and column size properly. All right. Next one. In the interview, arrays is the most favorite topic to ask the questions. They will ask lot of coding challenges on the arrays guys. What are the coding challenges they will ask in the arrays? Here I have given 10 number of questions on the arrays guys. So in the next video, I will discuss one by one of these coding challenges. Java program to find min and max elements in array. Java program to sort the array. Merge two arrays into single array. Java program to find missing number in the array. Java program to reverse an array without using second array. Java program to print duplicate elements in the array. Java program to print unique elements in the array. How to sort an array of zeros and ones by using Java program, etc. N number of coding challenges will be asked in the interview. So you need to be very good with this logical programming on the arrays. Write one program to match two arrays into single array. Let us see here, int array is having three elements. Uh, int array b is having three elements. I want the output as combination of these two arrays. All right, let us see how to do that. Here, I'm taking a program. First array having three elements. The length of the first array is three. And the second array having three elements. The length of the second array is three. Now I want to merge these two arrays into single array. Here three elements available. Here three elements available. So if I merge, I'm going to get six elements. So I'm going to create one new array with a size as a six. New integer that is a dot length plus b dot length. a dot length plus b dot length. That means three plus three, it is going to give the length as six. Because in future, array A may have more elements, array B also may have more elements. That's why instead of hard coding the size, I'm calculating the length of A, length of B and I'm adding them. So my array C is created. When the array C is created, six indexes will be created. In that six indexes, first we need to store array A values, then we need to store array B values. For integer i is equal to zero, i less than a dot length. First I am traversing the first array and I am going to store the first array data into third array. C of i is equal to a of i. What it is going to do? It is going to take all the values from the first array and it is going to store into second array. Alright, so now what will happen? Once this loop is completed, then it is going to store in the second array, three indexes will be created, right? One will be created, two will be created and three will be created. The remaining three will be zeros, default value. Now first array values are stored in the third array. Now I need to store the second array values also into third array. How can we do that? I'm going to take one more loop. For integer i is equal to zero, i less than b dot length. Now I'm going to traverse second array to store the data. Then i plus plus. Right. Now here I need to store the b array data into third array. In the third array, already first array data is stored. Zeroth index is having the value. First index also having the value. Second index also having the value. In the last three indexes, I need to store the data. So I need to store the data from here to here. Already in the zeroth position, first position, second position, first array data is stored. So we should not, we should not take it as C of i. If you take C of i, then what will happen? It will become C of 0. C of 0 means already it is having the data here. So what I will do is C of i plus a dot length. Wherever first array length is ended, from there I am going to start the second array values. C of i plus a dot length is equal to B of i. That means i value is starting from 0. B of i nothing but B of 0, 4 value, where it will store 0 plus a dot length. a dot length is 3. So 0 plus 3, it will become c of 3. c of 3 means it will store the fourth value here. Then it will take b of 1. b of 1 will be stored 1 plus 3. It will be stored here. Then it will take b of 2. b of 2 means it will take the sixth value. Sixth value will be stored that is 2 plus 3, 5. It is going to store here. So like this we are going to store two arrays values into single array. Then let me print that final array which we have prepared system.out.println 
arrays dot to string arrays is a predefined class which is available to print array element by using this to string good now see 1 2 3 4 5 6 first array data and the second array data is merged into third array look at the logic here first array having three values the length is three second array having three values the length is three i want to merge these two arrays into single array i'm creating a new array in the line number 14 with the size a dot length plus b dot length that means it will become six new array will create new array is created with the size as six then I am traversing first array, first array data I am traversing from 0th index and I am storing into third array which is newly created. So first 1, 2, 3 will be stored. Then I am traversing the second array, second array having three values, those three values I need to start in the last three indexes. How to access these indexes? i plus a dot length. Wherever a values are stored from the from next position I need to store the b array values. So this will do that. Finally, I am printing that. When I execute it, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How to sort one array by using Java program. If you see here, we are taking one input array, which is having 4, 2, 3, 1. It, the elements in the array are in the zigzag order. Now, I want to sort that array so that we need to get the output as 1, 2, 3, 4. We need to do the sorting in the ascending order. Alright, let us see how to write the logic to sort this array. Here I am taking Java program, Java class I have taken, program to sort the array. I am taking a class with a name called demo. I am taking a main method. In this method I have declared one array. We need to write the logic. Once the logic is implemented, then I am going to print that array by using arrays.toString method. First, let me execute this program. You see, array elements are printed as it is in the zigzag order. Now we need to write the logic. To do the sorting so how we are going to do this sorting here i'm going to do this sorting by using comparison i'm going to compare first element with the next element as i want to do sorting in the ascending order lowest values should come first like this one two three four in order to perform this sorting first i'm going to traverse this loop from the 0th index first i'm going to take the four this is in the 0th position 4 I am going to compare with 2. 2 is less than 4. So 2 should come to first position and 4 should go to second position. Once this swapping is completed, it will become 2, 4, 3, 1. The same thing I need to do for the remaining elements also. I need to compare these elements. So if the first element is low, low value, it has to be available here. Suppose when I compare 4 and 3, 4 is the big value and 3 is the small value. 3 should come to this position, 4 should come to this position. Like this we need to swap the elements to get the sorted order. Alright, how to implement logic for this? Now, first I am going to take a loop for integer i is equal to 0, i less than array dot length, i plus plus. I want to traverse the array from the 0th index. Now, when I am traversing the array from the 0th index, I will access the first element. This first element should be compared with the next element. So if when I compare the first element with the next element, if a first element is a bigger value, then first element should go to the second position. Second position value should come to the first position. So how I am going to compare the first element with the next element? For that here I am going to take one more loop. Int j is equal to i plus 1. When the i value is 0, j value should be 1 i value is 0th index, j value should be the next index into j is equal to i plus 1 and j less than array dot length comma j plus plus. Alright, now how to compare this? In order to compare this, if a of i is greater than a of j. If a of i is greater than j, that means what is the meaning of this? a of i, i value is 0, a of i means a of 0, a of 0 means 4. If 4 is greater than a of j, j means i plus 1, i value is 0, 0 plus 1 it will be 1. So a of i is 4, a of 0 is 2, 4 is greater than 2, yes 4 is greater than 2. Then 2 should come to 4th position and 4 should go to the 2 position. I need to do the swapping. In order to the swapping, I am going to take one temp variable. 
into temp is equal to a of i the it means the fourth value i'm storing into one temp variable then i'm going to do a of i is equal to a of j that means 2 is coming to first position and 4 i need to store into second position a of j is equal to temp so this is the swapping that i'm doing observe carefully i want to compare first value with the second value so i index i'm starting from 0 j index i'm starting from i plus 1 so a of i means a of 0 is 4 a of j means a of 1 4 and 2 4 is greater than 2 when 4 is greater than 2 swap is required because biggest value available in the first position lowest value available in the second position we want to sort the array in the ascending order so 2 should come to first position 4 should go to second position if a of i greater than a of j swapping is required condition satisfied so here i am taking the 4 value i am storing into temporary variable a of i i am storing into temp variable for backup then a of j nothing but a of 1 value i am storing into a of i a of i nothing but a of 0 is equal to a of j in the 0th index i am storing the first index value then in the first index i am storing the 0th index value this is the swapping this is swapping will happen for all the elements available in the array so once these loops are completed then our array will be sorted let's print arrays dot to string of a then let's execute it yes you see 1 2 3 4 we are getting as a output so complete array got sorted how a of i 0 a of j 1 so this value compared with this value condition satisfied swapping completed once the swapping is completed our array will become 2 comma 4 comma 3 comma 1 once this is completed it will become like this 4 is available now it replaced with 2 2 comma 4 comma 3 comma 1 then j value will be incremented j plus plus a of i a of i is what now once the swapping is completed a of i a of i means 2 and a of j j value become incremented i plus 1 already j is 1 na? 1 plus 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 it is going to increment a j value become 2 a of i greater than a of j a of i is 2 a of j is 2 so here 0 1 and 2 it is going to compare with 2 greater than 3 condition not satisfied if condition not satisfied swapping is not required then j value will be incremented 2 greater than 1 yes 2 is greater than 1 then 1 should come to first position 2 should go to last position once this is swapped it will become like this 1 comma 4 comma 3 comma 2 like this swapping is happened once this inner loop is completed then again outer loop is going to start i value will be incremented i value will become 1 then j value become 1 plus 1 j value will become 2 a of 1 greater than a of 2 a of 1 is what 4 and a of 2 is what 3 4 greater than 3 then again swapping is going to happen this process will repeat until all the elements are sorted so once we execute this program we are able to see that 1 2 3 4 coming in the sorted order for example if i want to sort this array in the descending order then if a first value is less than second value then only swapping is required if i change this greater than symbol to less than symbol then this array will be sorted in the descending order if i keep a of i greater than a of j then it will be sorted in the ascending order so here we are comparing if a first value is bigger than the second value then swapping that means it is going to perform ascending order suppose if a first value and second value when compare if a first value is less than second value then only i want to swap for the descending order like this we can sort the array either in the ascending order or in the descending order by comparing first element with the next element and remaining elements when we compare you need to swap the elements based on your conditions this is one approach to sort the array and what is the second approach to sort the array without writing this logic also we can sort it how to do that there is a predefined method in the arrays class arrays dot sort method is available pass the array as an input arrays is a predefined class available in java dot util package 
arrays dot sort of array now let's execute it when i give arrays dot sort it is sorting my array in the ascending order so here we are sorting by using predefined method but in the interview if you explain this they will not accept it interviewer will expect you to write the logic to perform the sorting without using predefined method so you should be able to write the logic by using this loop approach all right i hope you understand how to sort the array how to print duplicate elements of array by using java program if you see here i have taken one input array in this array we have several elements in these elements few elements are repeated those are 4 and 2 we need to find out which are repeated elements we need to get that output as 4 and 2 all right let us see how to write the logic for that here i have taken one java program public class demo and i'm taking a main method main method is used to run my java program in this i'm writing one input array in this array if you observe 4 available two times so it is repeated 2 is available 2 times it is repeated 3 available only one time 1 available only one time 5 available only one time so 4 and 2 are the repeated elements so how to print only repeated elements from this array by using our java all right so here what is the logic that i am going to write is i am going to take this input array here i will take a loop to traverse this array to access the array elements from 0th index i am going to take one for loop so here inside this first for loop i am going to traverse the array value from the 0th index all right so i am going to take one for loop for integer i is equal to 0 and i less than a dot length and i plus plus i am going to increment the index value now here i am going to access the first value this first value i want to compare i want to compare this first index value with the all the other index values available in the array 4 i will compare with 2 4 and 2 not same so then i will go and compare 4 and 3 4 and 3 not same i will compare 4 and 2 not same i will compare 4 and 1 not same i will compare 4 and 4 yes matched so then i need to print 4 as one repeated element then 4 will be compared with the 5 that means 4 is the 0th index value that 0th index value i am going to compare with all the other indexes values this is 0th index value this is 0th index value should be compared from the first index value to till end of the loop once it is completed then i am going to take the 2 here 2 will be compared with the remaining elements in the array then i am going to compare 3 with the remaining elements in the array then I will take 2 compare with the remaining elements in the array. Like this I am going to take the one element. That element will be compared with the all the remaining elements in the array. For that I am going to take one more loop. Inner loop. For integer j is equal to i plus 1. Then i less than a dot length and i j plus plus. So why I am starting the j index from i plus 1? Because when a of i is 0th index i don't want to compare the 0th index value with the 0th index value i want to compare 0th index value with the next index value so when the i value is 0 j value will be 1 then a of i will be compared with a of j a of i will be compared with the second index value i mean first index value a of i will be compared with this a of i will be compared with this once this comparison is completed then i will take the second element second element will be compared with all the remaining elements so like this we can find out what are the duplicate elements available in the array so let's implement logic for this so here array is available let me take first loop int i is equal to 0 i less than a dot length and i plus plus first loop then i'm going to take inner loop for this for int j is equal to i plus 1 then j less than a dot length and j plus plus okay now here if a of i value is equal to a of j value that means it is a repeated value system dot out dot print ln a of i now let us see is our logic is going to give the correct output 
yes 402 we are getting as a repeated elements let me take here 3 also now 4 is repeated 2 is repeated 3 also repeated let's execute it yes 4 and 2 are the repeated elements i hope you are able to understand the logic what we are implementing so we are taking the first element that is a of i then we are taking next element that is by using a of j always the j value will be the next index of the i value a of i means first value 4 a of j is i plus 1 4 will be compared with 2 if 4 and 2 both are same it will be printed but actually 4 and 2 are not same it will not print up once this is completed for one iteration then j value will be incremented j value will become 2 then 4 and 3 will be compared not same then 4 and 2 will be compared not same then 4 and 1 will be compared not same 4 and 4 will be compared yes same then 4 will be printed after that again j value will be incremented 4 will be compared with 5 not same 4 will be compared with 3 not same so inner loop execution got completed once the inner loop execution is completed, then i value will be incremented. Then a of 1. a of 1 means it is going to take 2. When a, is, a of 1 is available, i value became 1. When a of 1, j value 1 plus 1, j will become 2. a of 1 equal to a of 2. That means 2 will be compared with 3, not same. Then 2 will be compared with 2 because once the j value is accessed, j will be incremented. First it is going to start here, with this it will compare, not same. Then j value will become 3. When the j value will become 3, 2 and 2 will be compared. 2 and 2 matched, then 2 will be printed. Then 2 will be compared with all the remaining elements also. Then inner loop will be completed. Once the inner loop is completed, again outer loop. i value will become 2 now. When the i value become 2, it will consider 3. When the i value is 2, j value will become 3. 3 will be compared with 2. 3 will be compared with 1, 3 will be compared with 4, 5, 3 will be compared with 3 also, it matched, then it is going to print that, so inner loop is completed, then again i value will be incremented, i will take here, 2 will be compared with all the remaining elements, no, then 1 will be compared with all the remaining elements, no, 4 will be compared with all the remaining elements, no, 5 will be compared with all the remaining elements, no, like this we can print duplicate elements available in the array. I hope you understand the logic.